Hello, dear friends, and welcome to Life of Love. We have another great episode for you today. I have a dear friend. We we just connected through Podmatch, and we have so many things in common, and he has such great perspective on things I've never thought about the way he, he presents things. So really excited to introduce Liam Naden. He's a speaker, teacher, writer, and researcher, and he also is a relationship coach. He does many other things as well. I feel a little misled because right now he's sitting on a boat in France. <laughs> and he's, it's amazing the people we get to meet. So, oh, Liam, thank you for being here and taking the time all the way from across the world here. Oh, thank you very much, Julie, for, having, for giving me the opportunity to talk with you. Mm. Well, it's great. It's great. And you like to live in the love vibration and and think about how how to use your body to show up in the most abundant way. And I love your perspective on the brain. And we want to get into that. But first, hold on, I want to I want you to be able to give my audience a little perspective on your journey and and where you've been. And I read in your profile that at one time you were in the your 40s, you ended up homeless. And I wondered if you could share how being homeless led you to the breakthroughs on the brain information and, and any of your perspective that you gained from that time of of just displacement and, and lack and how you came out of that. Sure. Well, I was always been one of those people, maybe like many of your listeners, who've always been seeking to be the best that I could be. And even from a young child, I was always... My mother used to say I was very determined, but I've always throughout my life wanted to be the best that I could be, or another word for that is probably successful, you know. So I've always gone out there to to really find everything I could about how to be happy and successful, and I set up many businesses throughout my life. I've had 18 different businesses, and along the way, I've also studied everything I could about success. And that's taken me in many different directions, including religion. I was brought up a Christian. So the first thing you are taught as a Christian on how to be happy is to ask God for what you want, and God will give it to you. So I was brought up a Christian. I learned a lot about um, you know, um, religion and how that applies to this whole area of success. But I've also studied personal development, self-help, motivation, and a lot of spiritual things as well. And, you know, I spent many years literally reading everything I could, every book, going to seminars all over the world, going to workshops, doing courses, buying programs and listening to things like, um, in those days, tapes or recordings of how to reprogram your subconscious mind and reciting affirmations and, and doing goal setting and all of those things. So I really built up this enormous body of information about how to be successful. And I thought I was doing pretty well. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I, I became a multimillionaire and I had multiple homes and I'd done lots of travel and had, you know, lots of things going, good things going on. But something happened, you mentioned before, when in my mid forties, I woke up one day and I literally had lost everything. It happened very quickly. And I went from being this successful person literally to having to move in with my elderly mother and sleep on the sofa in her living room, in her small apartment. I had nothing. She even had, you know, she was in her 70s and she went out to work to pay for my food. That's how bad it was. <laughs> but, but after that, something really strange, well, I thought was strange until I figured out what it was, happened in my life. And that was, as I went through that experience, and I came out the other side and I started to form new businesses and, and make, make money again and get back on my feet, as it were. And I was starting to do things, making good money again and having success in business. And I was also starting to do a lot of things I wanted to do, like travel and form a good relationship with somebody and do a lot of these things. But I realized there was a very big difference between what I was doing, <clears throat> excuse me, after this losing everything experience and what I'd been doing before. And what I'd been doing before, all my life, really to that point, was I'd been chasing after success. I'd really been pushing all the time how, and asking, how can I be more, more successful? What's the bigger goal? 
How can I have more? How can I be more? You know, we're and just working harder and harder, setting myself higher and higher goals, chasing after success. And although on one level I did have, did have a lot of success, you know, with the, the money and all that sort of thing, I also had a lot of stress and problems. And I, got, I had got to the point of thinking, well, and I'm sure I've read it in many books, because this is what we're led to believe, all problems and stress, it's just a natural part of being successful. You know, if you want to be successful, you have to overcome adversity. You have to, and live with, you know, life isn't going to be good all the time, and you're going to have all these, these challenges that you have to overcome. So that's what I believed, that that was just the price you pay for success. But it does create a roller coaster where you feel good one day and then, oh, you know, <clears throat> more problems show up and you never, you never really feel in control of your life. So that was my life beforehand. And so when I lost everything, the first, I should say, one thing that puzzled me was how could I have lost everything given I know so much? I know about goal setting and positive thinking and um, spiritual, you know, the law of attraction and vibration and, 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 and all of these things. But it wasn't on any of my plans to lose everything. I don't feel in control. I don't think any of those things have helped me to get to where I am. So what's going on? Something different must be going on. And what I realized after, as I mentioned when I rebuilt my life, before whereas I'd been chasing after success, something very different was happening because it was like success was coming to me. And instead of me struggling, for op looking for opportunities or ways to make money or ways to do things, it was like they just showed up, almost, we'd probably call them luck, coincidence, synchronicity. And although I was working hard, it was a different sort of hard work. It was a, a joyful, fun hard work, and it didn't have the problems and stress. It was like things were, things were flowing, things were going really well. I was being productive, creative, and this is the way I still live. So I thought, I need to figure out the difference here because... Rather than, I, I want to know what I'm doing right, because I'm not struggling. For the first time in my life, I'm feeling in control of my life. I'm feeling truly happy. I feel, I'm feeling like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, and I'm getting the results that I really want, rather than dealing with problems and stress. So I thought, I want to figure out what it is that I'm doing differently, because I don't want to stop doing it. And I need to know, because all of this information I had about how to create success, it didn't work for me, and now I'm doing something differently that is working, but I don't know what it is. So that's what led me to really go right back to basics and look at look at life, our own life, in a different way, a much more fundamental way, to realize what, re and to, to uncover really what creates the success or the results that we get in our life, and that's, that's what led me to, to the, this um, research into the brain, actually. Wow, it, it's... It's so non-typical human to say things are going right. Why? <laughs> Usually people are like, things are in the crapper. Why? <laughs> well, unfortunately, most people never really have enough going right in their life to see what's going right, do they? Because everybody, when you've got lots of problems, that's what you're focused on. And interestingly enough, in terms of how your brain works, that's one of the problems. It's the focusing on the problems that creates more problems because, as you probably know, whatever you focus on, you get more of. But this is actually a biological way the brain works as well. It's not just a sort of a quantum physics sort of metaphysical idea. It's actually a biological idea, how your brain works. So that gratitude, it's, it's not just spiritual. It's, it's wiring in our brain that we can access. So, yeah, so... That leads me to the next question I had for you is how do you how do you define um, using your brain to reach a higher level of consciousness or does that does that involve using all four parts of your brain that you described? What do you want to describe first, the four parts of your brain or how your brain brings you to higher consciousness? Um, well, maybe talk about the, the four parts of the brain and then you'll see how the brain brings you to how it works, if you like. Okay, yeah. yeah. Because... Okay. Here's the thing about we have a spiritual nature, absolutely. I mean, we are spiritual beings having a physical experience. But, of course, the one thing when we look at our life in that way, the, the thing that we forget is that we live in a biological world, we live in a biological body. 
and there are physical laws that govern the way things work. And we know this is true because it doesn't matter how how much you pray or um, how spiritual you feel or how much you visualize, if you walk off a 10-story building, you're going to fall down. You know, so we are governed by these physical laws, and that's obviously the law of gravity. And there are other laws, such as the law of least resistance, which means that the less resistance there is to something, the faster it goes. So you go faster downstream than you do against the current, or you go faster riding a bicycle with the wind than you do against it. That's another physical law. But there's a physical law that we have forgotten about or we've never been taught about, and it's actually called the, what I call, I think I'm the first person to call it this, but it, that it is a law. It's called the law of thriving. And what that means is every biological being, every living thing, whether it be a plant, an animal, an insect, or a human being, is all biologically wired to thrive. And the reason for that is that, that everything is, is designed to strive to survive, to survive as well and as for, for as long as it can. That's the biological purpose of all life. If you ask any biological scientist, he will say that is the purpose of life is to survive. So if everything's wired to survive, the best chance something has of surviving is being the best that it can be. Because the better it is, the stronger, the healthier, whatever, the, the greater the chance it has for surviving. So everything is actually biologically wired, as I say, not just to survive, but to thrive. Because when it thrives, it has the greatest chance of survival. And we're exactly the same. We're wired to biologically be the best that we can be so that we have the greatest chance for survival. Now, that raises two questions when you realize that that's true. Firstly, well, what does that mean? What, what does being the best that we can be mean on, for a human? Because we know for an animal, well, it means it can run the fastest or it lives in the best environment, all those things. But for humans, we're a bit more complex because we have this more complex mind component. So being the best that we can be just means physically the best that we can be. But it also means being the best that we can be mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, because we have those comp they are components that help our survival. And what all that adds up to is being happy. We're all, we, when we are the best that we can be, we are our happiest. And we know this, when we're feeling happy, when we're feeling good, which means feeling loving and all those, all those things, your body feels better, you feel better, you don't, you, and you're more creative, you're more loving, and, and you're more productive and you live a much richer life, you're more generous to, to others. All of these things help your survival. They make you more creative to find better ways to survive and to thrive, as it were. So on a very real, practical, biological level, and this is also explained by all of religion, all of spirituality in a slightly different way, our purpose is to be happy. When we are happy, we are being our best. So therefore, we have the greatest chance of survival. So that's interesting, isn't it? When you think our purpose for living is to be happy. And in actual fact, everything else we think we want, you know, all of the goals and anyone listening, you know, just, just if you have a goal in life or goals, ask yourself, why do I want that? If I, my goal is to make a certain amount of money or have a certain a happy relationship or a happy family or whatever it is, why do I want that? You only want it for one reason. You want it because you think by getting it, you're going to be happy. So the whole, every goal is the same, is to be happy. Everything we think we want is just to be happy. That is, that is our driving force at, because it's our purpose is to be happy because that's when we're at our best. So I thought, well, this is interesting. So our, my purpose here, biologically, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally, is to feel the best that I can, to be the best version of myself that I can be, and that means being the happiest. So has nature provided anything in the way of a sort of a, a mechanism or a machinery or a system or any, any, any apparatus that carry, would help me carry out that purpose for being the best that I can be, including my happiest? And it turns out for every living thing, nature has provided something with that specific purpose, and that is a brain. Every living thing has been provided with a brain whose sole purpose is to ensure that it is the best that it can be that it's thriving so that it has the greatest chance for survival. So this is strange, isn't it, when you think, we humans, we've been given this brain, its whole job is to make us happy. 
It's what, and it's the most incredibly powerful computer that exists in the universe. So its its whole purpose is to make sure we are happy and being the best that we can be. So I thought, well, that makes sense as well. But hang on, why is nobody happy? If that's the purpose of the brain, why is it that that so few people are being the best that they can be? Are feeling that they? I mean, if you were to ask most people, do you think? Are you really happy in your life? Is there anything else you want? How many people would you meet who would say, I feel so happy, my life is perfect, everything is great? Very, very few. Which is bizarre, because if you look at the rest of nature, all you see is success. You don't see failure. There's a very small percentage of nature. I was reading something recently, a researcher had come up with this this, um, observation and this conclusion that nature is 98% successful. Every living thing is being the best that it can be. It's if it's a tree or a plant, it's growing to its best, or an animal, or a you know, there's a small two percent failure rate where maybe a tree is planted in the wrong place, or a storm comes along and wipes everything out, or a drought, you know, makes life struggle. But most of nature is being, and if you really get out in nature and have a look, you'll see that's true. Every living thing is just doing its job perfectly in perfect harmony. So what makes us different? And then I thought, well, another way of thinking about the brain, what, what is, how would you describe something that has a single job to do? It's a machine. You know, you think about a, a, your motor car. It's a machine, and it's just got one sim- simple task, which is to get you from where you are to where you want to go. And it, it's designed to do that. It's designed to do that predictably, efficiently, um, enjoyably for you in the car, you know that's what it's that's what it's there to do. But if it doesn't do that, then what can you say? So you get into your car and it doesn't get you to where you want to go. Maybe you have this really awful, bumpy ride or the engine blows up or the car doesn't move at all or if it does, it doesn't go very well or it, you know something goes wrong. What, what do we call when it goes wrong? We call it a problem. So what is a problem? It's a sign that the machine isn't working right. It's not being used the right way. You know, if you get into a car and you leave the handbrake on and you try and press the um, accelerator, it's not going to do the, it's probably not going to work. And you put the wrong fuel in, it's probably not going to work. And you would say, and someone who knew how the car worked would say, well, that's not how you drive it. That's why you've got problems. So in a very real sense, what it turns out for us as humans, problems are actually a sign that we're using the machine the wrong way. The machine is being used the wrong way. And when you understand how the machine works, the brain, and you use it the right way, the funny thing is the problems seem to disappear. And that literally is what I realized had happened to me. Instead, of, So instead of chasing after success and all that pressure, my brain was making my life work the way it's supposed to. And I didn't know at that point you know, what I was doing differently, but, but when I back-engineered it, I figured, all this, I figured this all out. And then funnily enough, I, I discovered that how the brain works is described in all spirituality. The Bible, is the, for instance, is the best instruction manual on a practical sense of how your brain works that exists. So we've actually been told how to do this, but we've also been filled with all these other crazy ideas and, and wrong information that has led us off track. And that's really what it comes down to. Once you understand that this machine is designed to make you the best you can be, give you the best life possible, make you happy. Problems are not a natural part of of this world, really. They take you away from being the best that you can be. They cause you know damage to your body and give you stress. So if they don't help, if something doesn't help you to survive and thrive, then it can't be natural. It's because it's not part of uh, the biological world to do that. So that's um, how I came up with what I created. It was a model for how the brain works. And it turns out, now, there's all sorts of science. It, science has described all of this as well. And there's all sorts of technical jargon in uh, and, and describing these parts. But what I've done is, is created a, a model of these four parts, as it turns out there are, how they work. And just like with a car, when once you know how it works, you go, now I know how to use it. Hmm. Because we're divine beings and God gave us the tools to thrive. It's the law of thriving. Oof. Now, okay, so 
I'm curious. There's two things. Where in the Bible is this? Everywhere. And then I'll ask, everywhere? Yep. 360 times it has the three magic words. But to tell you what those three magic words are. I know them. I know them. Okay. Just ask. No. That's two. That's, I heard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> ask. Asking is the problem. I'll, I'll give you, I know we're, we're limited. Okay, because I saw, I saw somewhere it says in the Bible at, to ask for, and you re- will receive 365 times. But there's something else? Yes, and it's more fundamental about how, and it relates to how you ask as well. But I'll, I know we're, we're running short on time, so I'll give you just the quick rundown on, on the four parts of the brain, and the three words will pop okay. your head probably, and if not, Okay. All right. Become pretty awesome. I'm going to be your student here. <laughs> but essentially, as I say, there are four parts of the brain. The first part's what I call the thinking brain, and the thinking brain. This is the part of your brain, and I should say these are all physical locations in your head. These aren't just ideas. This isn't some, you know, like talking about conscious, subconscious mind or anything. These are separate physical parts of your brain that science has shown carry out these functions. So the thinking. Okay, so yeah. thinking is, is that in the front, or where's the thinking yeah. part? On the top of your head, sometimes called. On the top of your head. Yeah. And what the thing- Okay, so everybody, thinking is on the top of your head. Yeah. It's where you put your hat, your thinking cap. That's right. Now, the thinking brain, okay. the purpose of that is to take all of the information that you gather and experience in your life in every moment and store it as information that you can later use to make sense of things. So everything that you hear, smell, taste, touch, or see, any thoughts and ideas, it literally goes through your thinking brain and gets filed and stored in in like a library or a database. So this is all your knowledge. This is everything that you've accumulated in your life that you could say that you know. Okay, that's the thinking brain. The second part of your brain is the feeling brain, the emotional brain. And that's actually located just below the thinking brain and sort of near the middle of your head. Now, obviously, this is obviously what this part of the brain is responsible for. That's for how you feel. So it generates emotions for you, which everything from, on the one end, you know, love and gratitude and happiness to fear, stress, anxiety. This is all managed by the emotional thinking brain. The third part of your brain is your what I call your survival brain. This is at the back of the head. This is sometimes called the reptilian brain or it's, it's or the brain stem. It's a very primitive the oldest part of the brain. And as the name suggests, what this part of your brain is responsible for is everything to, to keep you alive, your survival. So all of your, this manages all of your unconscious, you know, bodily functions like your breathing, your heart, and all those things that you don't have to think about. This is all managed by your survival brain. So we have the thinking, the feeling, and the survival brain. Survival. Okay. okay. There's a fourth part of the brain, and this has only more recently become discovered, if you like, or researched by scientists and neuroscientists who look at the brain to realize this is actually a separate area of the brain. And it's what I call the creative brain. And what the creative brain does, this is actually the part of your brain that's supposed to be, supposed to be, and I'll say why it's not for most people shortly, but it's supposed to be the part of your brain that runs your life. Because this is the part that really can make you the best that you can be. Because this is the part, as the name suggests, where your creativity comes from. It's where your imagination comes from. It's where your intuition comes from. You know, when you get that gut feeling, "Mm, that doesn't feel right, or maybe I should do that, or maybe I shouldn't do that, or maybe I'm doing the wrong thing, or I know I'm doing the right thing. I can feel it. All this is managed by your creative brain. And it is also where your motivation comes from. And... It's where, you, and as I say, your creativity. But as you can imagine, this part of your brain, when it's all operating, when you're being creative, resourceful, imaginative, coming up with new ideas, because that generates the, those moments you go, I've never thought of that before. Where did that idea come from? That's all being generated, not from your thinking brain, because your thinking brain only, only contains what you've already experienced. But we've all had this moment where we don't know where we got this new idea from. It came from out of nowhere. Musicians talk about this, creators and artists, you know, musicians say, I just heard this music and I wrote it down. I don't know where it came from. I didn't think it up. So this is all a creative brain. And when you think, when you imagine or visualize, if you like, what this part of your brain's like, 
what are you doing when you're when you're you, when you're being like this? When you're using this part of your brain, when you're being resourceful and creative and making good decisions, you're being happy. You're doing all the right things. You're making the right decisions. You're you're not making the wrong decisions. This is, so, in other words, you're being the best that you can be. This is what the creative brain is supposed to ensure that when you activate this part of your brain, when you operate, when you live from this part of your brain, you're supposed to feel happy, good, and everything is working out for you in your life. And, and we sometimes, people have also described this state as being in the flow or being in the zone, if you like. Religion sometimes calls it enlightenment, although it's a little bit um, slightly different to that. But here's the other thing about, the, there's two other things about the creative brain. Firstly, it, when you're in the state, you have a higher level of awareness because this part of your brain can see the totality of who you are and your environment, what's really going on in your life. So because of that higher state of awareness that you might otherwise have, if you're, in other words, it sees the truth. And it sees things that sometimes in a lower state of awareness, when you're not using this part of your brain, you would call it luck, create, uh, sorry, co uh, coincidence, synchronicity. And you say, oh, it's just luck. This is your creative brain at work. And this is also the, where you access infinite knowledge, infinite intelligence, which is, is, of course, your spiritual side as well, because your awareness is, is so much more, you have an expanded awareness beyond just your physical but to see the truth of who you really are, that you're not just a physical being. So this is all managed by your creative brain. But here's the really interesting thing. Remember I mentioned the survival brain. So the way you're supposed to live your life is you're supposed to be being the best that you can be, feeling happy, making the right decisions, meeting the right people, the right things happening for you in your life, coming up with great ideas, doing what you're supposed to be doing. Have, if you set goals, having the right goals. This is the way you're supposed to live, being the best that you can be. But there's only one time when, some, when that might not be appropriate, and that is when something unexpected comes into your environment that's a threat to your survival, something that could hurt you or harm you. Remember, the brain was formed you know, millions of years ago when life was a lot more dangerous, when if you're walking through the forest, a lion might jump out from behind a rock. So... We, we have this mechanism within us to deal with those unexpected times when we're faced with a threat to our survival. And what happens then is that instead of feeling good and, and using our creative brain, we, we activate a mechanism, sometimes called the fight-flight-freeze mechanism, and we feel fear. And Well, actually, fear is the trigger, is, the, is that activates this fight-flight-fear mechanism. So there you are walking through the forest and, and you're feeling good. A lion jumps out. And what your brain says is, there's a threat to your survival. Activate what's called your sympathetic nervous system. You feel fear that activates your sympathetic nervous system. And it activates this fight, flight, freeze mechanism, which is designed to get all of your focus on eliminating that threat, that danger. So you run away or you cry out for help or you stand and fight. But it's, we all know what we're talking about. This is an instinctive reaction to a danger. You don't, you, know, you, don't, you don't even think about it. This is far quicker than what your thinking brain can handle. So, mm -hmm. And we, get, we run away or we do whatever we need to do to get rid of the lion. And then the brain, the brain says, okay, everything's in the clear. Stop feeling afraid and now go back to feeling really good and happy. Now, that's absolutely perfect. That's what it's designed for. But here's the thing. When your, brain activate, when your brain says there's a danger to your survival in your environment and it activates fear to tell you that and it activates this survival part of your brain, it takes all of the resources from everywhere else in your body, including the rest of your brain, all of that energy to deal with that danger there and then. And what's one of the things that it does? Where does it take energy from? It takes it from the creative part of your brain. It doesn't just take the energy from the creative part of your brain. It literally shuts down the creative brain, creative part of your brain, because you don't need imagination, creativity, feeling good, all those things when a lion is about to eat you. They're not only not helpful; they're, they are. They could you'd be, you could be dead if you know if you were going. Oh, I'm, I know there's a lion coming, but look at the beautiful stars in the sky, or oh, smell the trees and the flowers. Isn't it beautiful here? It doesn't work that way. 
So the whole point is, and this is how people are using their brain the wrong way, <clears throat> excuse me, is that what you need to realize is if you feel fear, anxiety, worry, stress, so anxiety, worry, and stress are all based on an underlying fear. If you feel that, what you're actually doing is you're activating the wrong part of your brain. You're activating the part of your brain that is only designed to get a, very quickly be used to get rid of an immediate threat to your survival. But it's not the part that has the answers to your problems. It's not the part that tells you what you should be doing in your life. It's not the part that's going to get you making good decisions. It's going to get you making bad decisions because you're just going to react to things. Like, you know, you have an argument with your wife or your husband, and you shout back at them, and you think later, why did I do that? It only made it worse. But you're not thinking, are you? But you're, you're using the, your, the stressed part of your brain, uh, if you like, to get you to do the wrong thing. And everybody out there is trying to create their life when they feel in the state of fear, anxiety, stress, and worry. And they don't realize they've actually deactivated the part of their brain that is responsible for doing all of that for them. So what are the three words that the Bible says 360 times? Do not be afraid. Be not afraid. Be, be not afraid. Absolutely. And it's not a... Try not to feel afraid because, you know, you'll feel better and don't worry. You know, it's an instruction. It's like you pick up a computer manual and it says this, or, or your car manual, this is how you drive it. Don't be afraid. When you are afraid, you activate your sympathetic nervous system, you shut off your creative brain, and you're just going to make mistakes. You're going to go after the wrong things. You're going to struggle. And you're going to try and use your thinking brain to figure it out and say, I need to learn more. I, what do I want? And you ask yourself, what, do, what are my goals? And I used to go to goal-setting workshops for years where you'd, and read all these books, and I'd have all these goals written down. But that's when you're in a state of fear. All your brain can say is, well, what have I got stored in the library about what you might want? I don't know if it would be right for you, but you read a book somewhere, you've seen people who are rich, well, maybe, and they look happy, and everyone says you'll be happy when you're rich, maybe you should have that. But, you're going to set the, but you don't know if it's the right goal for you, but your creative brain, which is your connection to this infinite intelligence, your spiritual nature, where all knowledge about you is accessible as well, not about just about your, but your yes, your the entirety of you. That's where all that access and that information is available. But you'll never be able to access it if you feel fear, stress, worry, anxiety, and that's why the Bible says this isn't an option. Be not afraid. That's it. When you're afraid, you're finished. Ah. Oh. And that's what I. Read. Okay, so. So what part of the brain is activated when you're in this higher consciousness, this creativity, this, you know, you're in your bliss, you're in the flow? Can, did they define where that is in your, in your anatomy? The, the technical terms, there's, a, there's two or three places. One is the pineal gland, which you might have heard of, and also... The, your third eye, yeah. like in the center of your brain? Yeah, it's sort of at the, yeah, in yeah. there. And also the basal forebrain is another part, another technical place where this where this is um, activated as well but you can see that and what you actually do when you activate your creative brain you activate another um, uh, state of your physiology which remember I said it was your sympathetic nervous system that gets activated when you feel fear you activate mm -hmm. something called your parasympathetic nervous system and every living thing has a state of being the best that it can be that science calls homeostasis Homeostasis means the perfect or the optimal functioning of the organism. It's when all of the organs, all of the, the physical processes in the body are working to their best. It's called homeostasis. And that is activated when you activate the parasympathetic nervous system, which in, in, in humans, is, as we have a more complex brain, is our, what I call our creative brain. So, And that's when we enter the state of the optimal functioning of our organism so our organs we know this when you feel stressed your body is not functioning well you know it functions best when you're not feeling stressed when you're feeling good you, everything all your digestion this is why people who get depressed often or when when people are unhappy they lose their appetite because your digestion shuts down because your brain is saying you've got an immediate threat to your survival here we need the energy from your digestion to to um, get rid of the lion. You know, you're not going to be, we're not going to be hanging around you being hungry or eating something when you, we need that energy that would other be, otherwise be used for digestion. 
So that's mm-hmm. really. Or, yeah, or if your body odor gets worse or you start having flatulence, those are all signs that you're having a your body's not sympathetic working. nervous system reaction, right? Yeah, your body is not working optimally. And so mm. it's just not just your physical body, but your mental processes. Mm. People say um, things like, you know, I, I'm, they, why they, they can't, they say they can't think straight, you know, all right. It's all because your brain is not allowing you to think straight because you're not activating mm-hmm. the right part of your, your brain. Doesn't, if a lion's attacking you, you don't want to think about it. It's going to shut down any thinking ability. You've just got to react. By the time you think about it and try and figure out mm, how big's the lion and where, where are they all, you know, it's going to be too late. So <clears throat> you're illuminating something. For people to, you know, if the audience is still listening. Guys, think about the center of your brain and it being connected. And you have this parasympathetic system that connects you to unlimited knowledge, inspiration, creativity. And breathe into that center part of your brain because that's there to help you to integrate. And just that knowledge that it's there and that state. That you, it's part of your anatomy. It's part of how you're a divine being. Just concentrate on that. Just visualize that part of your brain, and you're gonna. To me, that's that's very empowering. Just to understand that that's part of our anatomy. Because I I do I Liam I tend to go oh go to your heart go to your heart, but our brain is very powerful, and it gives us our how we're going to function in this 3D. We need our brain to help. So this is like a missing link for something I feel like I haven't provided for my audience. So I I honor this message so very much. I I just adore, I adore what you're saying. And I think that we could unpack it for two more hours of, right. of ways to, makes, to train your brain. I was just going to say, doesn't it make sense? Isn't it fascinating? It makes such sense from a biological thing. Because here's the thing, you can try and think positive, you can try and say, I believe and I have faith, but if you're feeling bad, you can't really access all of that energy, all of that, um, you can't feel true gratitude. And I think if people really think about this experience, when you feel true gratitude, when you really feel loving or grateful, just in the moment, you feel a release of fear. There's something about you that goes, you know, ah. Life is, and it might only be for a moment, but it's a different feeling entirely to to wanting to feel grateful or wanting to feel loving or wanting to appreciate um, what you have because that wanting, it still has within it a a feeling of unease of, you know, I really want to be happy. Oh, I'm, and and you say the words, and this is why affirmations usually don't work because, again, you're, you're affirming something, you're saying words. But your brain is not connecting you to the to the words to that reality, if you like. So it's so important, and I think the the real key thing to realize about all of this is that mm-hmm. fear, anything that makes that, you know, it's like a switch. It's a bit like a car. Again, if you realize that there's two switches in your car, one is will make it blow mm-hmm. up, and the other is will make it go. Now, if you get in, it's, I know they're not in a car or no car that I'm aware of, but if you got into it and someone said, now you've got two switches there, don't press, or two buttons, don't press that <laughs> one because that'll make the car blow up, but you press that one and it'll make it go perfectly. Now, it wouldn't matter what anyone else said to you. They could say, I'll oh, press the button, the red button, that will make it blow up. But if you believe, if you trust, if you affirm, if you're really confident, if you pray, if you do all of those things, and if you try and change your thoughts and your, your subconscious mind, if you press that button, it'll be fine. And you will say, no, I'm sorry, it doesn't matter what it is, it doesn't matter what you tell me, what justification you give me to say that I can press the red button and everything will be okay. I know that's not how it works. you know. And, and I think this is what we need to realize, that it doesn't matter what the justification you feel, for fear, because people, they start off saying to me when I talk about this, they say, oh, it's all very well for you, but I have all these problems in my life. I've got all these pressures and it's all these terrible things going on in the world and the economy is bad and there's wars and there's disease and people are being treated badly and I've got bad things going on. 
And so I'm justified in feeling bad. But the reality is we all actually have a choice as to how we have a choice over two things. One is what we allow into our life that makes us feel bad. We don't have to have the news on watching all that stuff that's making us feel bad. We don't have to be having a conversation with somebody that makes us feel bad. We don't have to be having a relationship with somebody that doesn't make, that makes us feel bad. We could actually eliminate eliminate those things from our life. We do have the choice. Now, the reason we don't is because of why? Because of fear. We don't realize that our creative brain will look after us, will give us the best life possible. We don't need to worry about it. It will do that as long as you activate it and allow it to do its job. So um, this is where, where um, the stakes of being very mindful. What is in my life that makes me feel bad? I've got to eliminate it. It's like drinking hydrochloric acid. Someone comes along, drink this glass of hydrochloric acid. No way am I going to touch that. That's what fear is. <laughs> Anything that makes you feel bad is activating the wrong part of your brain, and you will, it will never, you'll never be able to access the part that will give you the life that you really want. So that becomes the biggest challenge, I think, is once you understand this, is to say, I'm going to become very mindful, not of trying to change anything that's going on in the world or in my life, changing how I feel. Am I feeling bad or good? If I'm feeling bad, I'm not. one of the things I'm not going to be able to, to do is to see the truth. You know, it shuts your awareness. You're only focused on the lion. You can't see the truth of, of what, what's okay. around you. It's not designed to do that. So that's the big challenge, and it's really the big, um, uh, what's the word, the prize when you can do that. Realize that. Right, it, and it's individual. Nobody's going to tell you. Like you said, you can listen to every tape, you can go to every seminar, but nobody can tell you what brings you your joy and happiness. It's you taking inventory. Did you eat terrible foods and that made you unbalanced? Did you not sleep? Did you watch a show that was that was toxic to your your field? You know, we we know the news is all fear based, but you know, if anything, if you're not happy, just take an inventory, just really settle and and look at what's happening around you that you're letting in. Because like you said, you have a choice. You can press the self-destruction button or you can try to figure out what you need. Uh, this is very, very empowering. And it says it in the Bible. It says, give no thought for tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Don't, do not worry about what you shall eat, drink, or wear. They'll all be provided for you. How are they provided for you? They're provided for you through your creative brain like it does for the rest of nature. Everything's provided for in nature. It's everything's worth working perfectly. But if you worry about it, if you get stressed, if you try and figure it out, if you try and, and uh, you know, overcome your problems, as it were, you're not using your brain the right way. You're not allowing, because another word for this is faith, but it's not really faith. You know, the opposite of fear is not faith. The opposite of fear is understanding. It's like a car. When you understand how it works, you know that when you get in and turn the button on, it's going to go. And you, you don't have to believe it or, or hope that it does. You just know that it does. So you're not, you don't, it's not belief. It's just understanding. And you drive along and you, you know that all of the cars coming towards you are going to drive on the other side. Again, you don't worry about it. It's not, not something you believe. It's something you know you, because you understand how it works. And this is a great thing. When you start to understand how your brain works, you can trust the creative part, if you like it, because you know that's just how it works. It's going to do its job. And what happens is, is what happened to me, all of these strange things start showing up in your life, but they're good things. So, and you meet somebody who, who gives you a new opportunity or a new idea or becomes a new friend or you, go, you, know, you get a different job or opportunity or a different business opportunity. And you go, wow, I wonder how that happened. But the more you let your creative brain do this, the more of those sort of things happen. And the more you let go and just let it take control, let it do what it's there to do, and you just go along for the ride doing what you're supposed to do at the right time. And if you use that part of your brain, it will be the right thing. You're not going to make, you know, I used to make ridiculous mistakes in my business and in my personal life, which is all what culminated in losing everything. But, you know, it also created all the stress and problems that I had. And, mm -hmm. um, and it's all because I was in this fear state, which made me do all the wrong things. But once you start using your, the right part of your brain, the, the creative brain, you don't make those sort of mistakes. 
you know, it's, uh, mm. it's the way we're supposed to live. It's not complicated, but doesn't make it easy. <laughs> it it oh. The only thing that makes it hard is all of this wrong stuff we've been taught about. You know, it's a bit like you get a new car and you say you're young and you've never driven a car before and your father teaches you to drive and he says, and this is how it works and if anywhere you want to go, the car will take you and it's really comfortable. And you get out on the road for the first time and they're all of every car, it's full of cars and they're all broken down or they're all stuttering along or there are people out um, with, behind their car trying to push it along the road. And there are that people have got hoods up and everyone's, all sorts of people are making, you know, trying to help people fix their car and, get, and, you, and someone knocks on your windscreen and says, if you want to make your car go better, here I can sell you some leather seats or a, a, a new stereo system. And you're going, why is everybody doing it wrong? Why are they making it so hard for themselves? Can't they all see that leather seats and having all these people tell you what to do is, and getting and putting all the effort you can and trying to push your car along the road and being determined and motivated and, and, and putting in all this effort, they're all the wrong things to do. Don't these people understand that it's supposed to be an easy journey? It's supposed to be a fun journey. And you're supposed to, and it will be if you just drive, and they're all just driving it the wrong way. You know, it's not actually supposed to be difficult, really. Otherwise, we mm-hmm. would brain. Otherwise, you know, but we've made it difficult through all our sort of programming of all these wrong ideas that life's hard, life's supposed to be hard, life's supposed to be a struggle, we're supposed to have problems, problems are natural. None of those things are true on a biological, you know, it's a bit like saying, well, some things are going to go up in the air and other things, you know, things will go down because the law of gravity applies to some things and not to others. Mm. It's just, a, it's not the way it works. Well, Liam, this is, this has been a great conversation. I know you have another appointment, so I want to respect your time. I hear your message. Do not fear and use that part of your brain because there's not many things. I mean, if you're, if you're going to be in an accident, if you're being attacked, if someone's chasing you with a gun, that's different. But we have very few situations where we really need our sympathetic nervous system, that survival system to be activated. So if you can be aware when you're feeling like that fight, flight, or freeze, what, freeze? Yeah. if you're feeling that way, that that's a, it's a chance to recognize that there's something in your life that is blocking your thriving that's making you react and that's an area to you know to say okay I want to access that part the other part of my brain because I have a choice so that it's a powerful and I'm going to listen to this again because there's just so much knowledge and wisdom and I honor I honor your your journey and how you've used it and you're you're so generous to share these things because you could be sailing around your boat right now but you're here talking to everybody. <laughs> I just go with the flow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, thank you so much. Was there any last thing that you wanted to talk about before we say goodbye? If I could just say, if anyone would like to know more about this stuff, I have a whole lot of stuff on my own website, including a series of podcast episodes called Using Your Brain for Success. And I go into a lot more detail about how, how all of this stuff, about who you are and how your brain works and how to use it the right way. And I've also developed a process because, as you said, you know, there's really two things to it. One is you can stop putting on all the stuff that's making you feel bad. You can, you can cut out all the negativity, if you like. But you're still going to have times when you feel bad and you don't know why. It's because your brain, what's already in there, is is interpreting things as being dangerous when they're not. You know, in other words, most people are running around and all their brain is seeing are lions everywhere, but they're not real. So what you need to do is you need to find a way to clear that out and get your brain to see the difference between real danger and imaginary danger. Mm-hmm. I've created a process for that called neurostate rebalancing, which rebalances these four parts of your brain to get your brain to see, you know, somebody telling you something, it it doesn't need to make you feel bad because it's not a threat to your survival. Right. And I was thinking about it, you know, it's like, well, you're being insensitive to the world. No, you're not adding energy to something that's not really affecting you. I mean, Mm -hmm. there are people in war and there's, there's lots of things going on that, you know, there's injustice, but you feeding into that negativity doesn't, doesn't help those people. 
we talk for hours about this and we don't have time. But when you raise your level of consciousness, you raise your awareness, and you, by accessing and using your creative brain, you actually see the world in quite a different way. And I'd, without becoming a conspiracy theorist, I'd hesitate, I'd, I'd like to suggest that maybe what you are thinking, maybe your perception of what's going on, firstly is being formed by what other people who have a vested interest in making you feel afraid because you're much more easily controllable in a low state of awareness. So maybe they're not telling you the truth and maybe you can't see the truth and you can only see the truth when you're in a higher state of awareness, when you're using your creative brain. And when you're in that state, you see the truth. And you know, the truth is we live in a perfect world. People can't accept that when they're in a state of fear because they see all the problems because that's what their brain is designed to show them. But the truth is everything is a question of how you see it, perspective, perception. And when you raise your awareness, you see the beauty, the perfection and everything. And that's, that's a, you know, that's a, that is the truth. And when we say, oh, well, we've got all these problems, you only think you do. It only looks like that. And I know that's a controversial thing to probably end on, but, but it is actually uh, something worth thinking. maybe. I, you know, Liam, I, that resonates with me and I've decided I'm not forming an opinion unless I have firsthand knowledge or somebody who's been there because how can, how can we know by what, what information has been presented and who's sponsoring that information? It's a real concern. And, you know, it's, it's really important not to judge because we're not there. And I, I totally, I totally see where you're coming from. And I, I think it's an enlightened way to view the current events. And I think it's where we need to go. There's no reason we don't have to take a stand if we're not being physically threatened by something. We don't have to pick left, right. Just sometimes you just observe and send compassion to a, a situation, but you don't have to feed in to have an opinion or form a judgment. What's your judgment going to do? Entitle you to have an opinion, which you're not, you know, we could go on. <laughs> so thank you. I, 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 I love that we put that in the field, that there's no, there's no winning in placing a judgment well, on a well, situation. The judgment is merely a, a particular perception that is not correct. We could talk about this for hours, but, um, and it gets the whole idea of what is perception <laughs> and what is reality. But if we are spiritual beings, then we know mm -hmm. this is all an illusion anyway. Right. And and everyone signed up for certain difficulties, and all we can do is yeah. have compassion and and show up as our best self and, and come, yeah. like you said, with happiness, bring happiness to a happy, situation. You are far more um, generous, loving, and contributing to others than you are when you're not happy. So it's the opposite. This isn't being selfish. This is the opposite. If you want to make the biggest impact on the world, be happy yourself. And you will be resourceful, creative, imaginative, generous, Yay. loving, giving. That, that's how you change the world. It's not by with guns. Hmm. Right. Oh, Liam, let's, let's encourage everyone to change the world one day at a time. Pick your happiness. Create your... Create your perfect life. Every moment's a chance to live the life of your dreams. So be happy. We give you permission. <laughs> Liam says so. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Julie. It's been uh, really great to talk to you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. As always, you can go to my website to comment, make requests, or check out past episodes. I have a wealth of information on my website at www.youneedapeptalk.com. So you're welcome to go there and connect with me. There's even a free video. It's an energy video I made for you guys if you want to sign up. Have a great day and remember each moment's a chance to live the life of your dreams. Take care.